some of you uh, probably have an answer. How can we eliminate poverty? Anyone have a plan? I think uh, just come, come and join hand with on passive and oh bless. That's it. Yeah, but mechanically, how do you do that? Okay, you're non passive. We're in. Uh, I need uh, a practical strategy. I'm I'm collecting thoughts. Nira, you're wise. Tell me, how do you conquer poverty in the world? No one th thought about that before, Chris. Well, really don't, good don't question. go away. Don't no. don't sleep. No, that's a great question. Um, a really good question. We have the will. We will do it. But how? So we want to do. Uh, we want to know the mechanics, the plan, ideas. How do we do it? I would start off on a small scale, see what works, and build it up scale, 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 and then move it from city to city to country to country. Because once you find out what work, it'll work anywhere. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Marty, yes. Uh, even uh, we in India, we, we founders over there, we have a plan like this also that where you are living actually, uh, just uh, go in around uh, yourself. Uh, if we are now uh, like in uh, five, four, five or six hundred thousand, uh, so go to your locality uh, over there, not doing uh, uh, the whole city, but your locality and see uh, what situation over there and analyze it and then pick, pick that, that thing. And uh, so if uh, every founder does like this is, uh, then we have a greater impact uh, uh, as, a, as a whole over the society, I think so. I think find, a way, find a way to create jobs, um, Ash. Right? Okay. Um, it's, it's not about you know, giving money to people. You're not going to get rid of poverty that way. Um, but you, you know, if you can... Oh, no, no, no. You have to have a sustainable yeah, solution. That, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right. So if you if you find a way to create jobs, um, you know, uh, that was going to empower the people um, so that they have, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, solid source of, of income uh, coming in. Um, you know, and I, I think that's something that can be done uh, anywhere in the world. It's just a matter of um, knowing the logistics, knowing, uh, you know, what type of uh, jobs are best suited uh, based upon uh, the population and, and so on. Um, so it's a lot of work, but certainly I think we're up for the task and we can do it. We have enough people around the globe that can work in their local community um, to see you know, what makes the most sense and how it can be implemented. But certainly creating jobs will be a big part of it. Yeah, and I agree with that. Creating jobs is one. Um, trying to increase literacy. Yeah, but uh, let me give you an example, like some countries, uh, for example, like Egypt, it's a fabulous country and all that, but illiter illiteracy, I think it's 70%. Uh, it, it's, it's huge, it's, it's some, somewhere or some other countries, but, but I know the percentage is like a, a, a big chunk of the population. So what kind of a job can you offer unqualified, Un unskilled population. Yeah, so that's why I'm saying increasing the literacy rate, the rate of uh, education or whatever. So education has academy. to be there before right. the job. Yeah, okay. Tell okay. you what, I got a great idea, Ash. For all the founders that are literally texting me with millions of ideas right now, Exactly my thought. Chris, why don't you open, like anybody can come in. Don't say a hello or anything. I'm not, trying not, we to don't want to hear. Like get in, get in quickly. Give me an idea. I want to capture If anything catches my attention, it will help us uh, add that to oh, bless. We want to conquer poverty. No mistake, okay? Uh, we, uh, we can use all those ideas from the founders and uh, see what's uh, tangible and implement them. Yeah, and sometimes that's when you conquer one thing, you actually uh, create better, 
for other things. In other words, like if you go out for the homeless, but you conquer poverty, you know, there's millions of people in the streets right now handing out blankets every night, giving somebody a cup of soup, giving people whatever they need. The unsung heroes that we don't see. True. If you could give them the tools they need, they know more than any of us already. So yeah. if you could get them together and say, if you had the resources, what would you do to fix this street? And and if you can get that, like another thing you hear about the homeless and working on the homeless, it's and I know a lot of people say, Oh, I want to do it, I want to do it, but it's so massive because there's so many things that make homeless. But if you could take the homeless and part of creating a place for homeless or educating the homeless or whatever it is they need as a job also. So if you're your fellow man, by helping your fellow man, that becomes a business where he's creating wealth for himself as he creates a living for someone else. I know that sounds huge and all that, but you actually want to you want to you want to get a a, ro a rotation of that guy that's on the street is different for the woman that's on the street or the next guy or the next guy. But if you work at it to find out, you know, like right now, there's there's some. So you're saying person. it's not one size fits all, right? No, it, it no has way. to be multiple uh, no. uh, programs. Uh, absolutely, I see. Okay. absolutely. And the, the thing is, the knowledge that you're looking for, people have it right now, because they're working with where they're working with nothing to give something. If you can gather those type of people in a community service area, or you're talking to a community service, get them in. There's a lady and a man right now that said, if I had $10, I could do this. If I had $100, I could do this. All the open vacant buildings, I could get a, a soup kitchen going. I can get this going. Another person would give you another idea. And there's people in Unpassive, obviously, that have the same thing. But money won't fix this. Money alone won't fix this. It, it, it just won't. But you got to get people that know, and you have people that know right now who are working with nothing, giving out blankets every night. But they only got 10, and there's 12 people without one. You give them the resource and ask them what they need. Let them be the hero, and you feed them what they need and resources. And then you guide them, like you said. Uh, Michael said it too, you can't just give somebody a home and, and not help them with the situation of why they wound up on the street in the first place. And many, re many different reasons. But I, I think there's a way to do it small scale, get it right on street number one, and then scale up to street number two, number three, number four, number five, number six. And if you can do that, you can do it countrywide, you can do it nationwide, you can do it worldwide, I believe. Uh, what I gathered yeah. between all of you now, you, Michael, uh, Charles, and everyone, what I gathered is start small, apply a, a prototype or one uh, Absolutely. example in one area, uh, scale it, then replicate it, and uh, focus on employing people rather than feeding them fish, yep. teach them how to fish. Yep. Okay. And, and, then, and then and then the modification between countries, because there's a little difference in how they do things, what they do, illiteracy, whatever you want to call it. But mm. if you can fix street number one, you can fix any street in the world. But if mm. you try to conquer many streets at one time, it's it's you never really accomplish anything. I would do, like you said, a prototype. Boom, this worked. Mm. Everybody sees it. What happens when it works, it spreads to everything else. You get more people involved outside of Unpassing. You start getting cities involved and governments involved because they're seeing, wow, this is working, you know? A lot of people don't get anything done because they, a blanket keeps you warm, but it doesn't get you off the street. If you get shelter over them, you don't need as many blankets. <laughs> so you fix one street. Number one street is it's doing really well. Everybody sees it. You're starting to get notoriety, what it did for those that street, and then boom, next scale, next scale, next scale, next scale. No use doing the work many, many times. Get it right once, 
and scale it up to masses. I've been talking to Chris about it a long, long time, and I, I, I just think it's more involved. A lot of people do the the runway model thing. I I've help. seen I you fired help. up uh, before, brother. Yeah. I've seen you, but not this fired up. I love it. Like you sound like you've been ready for the moment. Oh, I, I, I'm not. I wasn't <laughs> on it, but the more I talk to Chris and everybody, and you watch it on the street, like even in my own neighborhood, and I'm thinking, man. And then I'm watching this guy drive up and down the street with a beat up car, and he's given everything he has. That's the hero. It's not me. Even if I have apples, he's mm. the hero. Give him the apples. Find out what he needs yeah. to, to scale it. Well, well, I don't need to be that guy. But if I have the apples, I can give them to him and ask him, what would you do if you had the resource? Oh, I'd buy that building right there. It's only $1. And if you get that building, guess what? The city's going to be happy because you're paying tax. So it's a chain reaction. Now you, you're, you're getting a street at a time. And now, you know, oh, oh yeah, it just blows me away. I, I can see what it could do. But I, I think a lot of people think, I want to be an angel. I want to do this. It's not, it's, not, it's not an easy task. And I think there's a lot of people that know what's going on now because they're doing it now while we speak. There's a lady and a man driving down the street in a beat-up car. They barely have enough for themselves. And they're saving the guy on the corner. That person I want to find. Because if you make them a hero, oh, because they already are with nothing. Sorry, I got on a rant here, but uh, but look at it this way: why why don't we do it? Why why not? Like why not? If we have a working method, okay, why it can't be done everywhere at the same time? So what I mean is, if you are able to lift up one family, one. Oh, can abso do the same. Abso absolutely, but then and we do you, that. Like everybody you, would do two, three, then, two, three. Yeah, then, but you and get if we together. Are a billion, that's three yeah. billion people, and we don't need to be the richest. Yeah. We just need to be people and you who want to extend their hand. You can always get back. Oh. You can always get back together with different communities or different countries and say, "Hey, this worked for me." Oh, I didn't try that. And then you're feeding off of each other at the same time. Yeah, it, it, yeah, obviously, yeah, that could be done. When I say scale, I'm saying scale maybe thousands of people at one time. But I'm just saying, once you get it right, you can. I can talk to John in Tibet or whatever and say, look, this is what I did. That won't work here, but this might, you know. So, yeah, it could be pretty powerful, actually. Should I open the chat so founders can quickly talk oh, well, uh as just I want to add uh, one or two things which uh, I feel uh, I have seen this uh, very good uh, uh, going on in India, actually. Uh, Government of India, actually, from the last, I think, 10 years, I, I think they have their uh, uh, prime minister uh, em employment uh, guarantee, this thing, uh, a program over there uh, for, for the poor people, actually. And that is such a hit uh, program uh, that... Uh, uh, they 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 uh, get those people uh, in villages and everywhere uh, that they guarantee minimum employment to them and then in uh, in place of them they they, they pay uh, to them for their work uh, what whatever is allotted by the government so government create a, a, a certain amount of job uh, like work for them and they those people those who are registered with that particular prime minister employment assurance so they people go over there and work over there and they get paid uh, 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 according to their work eight hours or five hours or whatever uh, this thing so that is going on very well over there there are uh, because india is a is a like a, uh, there are so many villages in every state so it's like a, a 60 percent of india actually live, lives in villages uh, so by doing that uh, uh, program, I have practically seen that that many poor people actually they are now earning handsomely from that program itself, mm -hmm. and that is uh, like a government funded. But if in on passive we create something like that, okay, we create some uh, jobs and uh, uh, guarantees those actually people go and work over there, and then we are going to pay over them. And I think that that will be a more viable solution that. Uh, 
in, in place of uh, uh, no doubt uh, we are oblessing it that's also good but in place of oblessing they are working and then earning they are now more confident we can say and uh, uh, like they feel more uh, blessed that they are doing something and and then getting in so that program actually is running very good we can google it and we can search it over it uh, in internet also it's from the last 10 years people uh, uh, life in india rural india they have really gone up gladys okay from kenya uh, originally uh, how do you fix poverty hi brother ash very Hello. nice to see you thank you very much nice to see everybody here i think poverty is a very very big issue around the globe uh, not one particular country but also when we believe- say poverty that will mm-hmm. eliminate Uh, homelessness with it that will uh, fix starvation mm-hmm. clothing yes. okay all of that okay so if we conquer poverty it, everything is is on track under control go ahead as founders we are more than a million point two founders and you have given us the vision so i believe that different countries have different needs that they need to address first some people it's just you know having the basic needs like as basic as food on the table uh, recently i had a woman who had to sell her baby in order to be able to have something to eat so those are short term goals but poverty will be much easier eradicated if we focus on long term goals by training people with the skills skills that can enable them to have sustainable income coming in because yeah. by giving them just the handouts those oh, ones much, cannot yeah. can yes training teach of skills yes teach them how to fish as you said yeah. and also focusing on education of the younger generation because if we help the older generation we forget about helping the younger generation still we are not solving problem yeah. so I, i think with the old bless we can do it at the even though we say as a smaller scale we can replicate ourselves already there are many founders doing it for example in africa we have started a movement called missionaries for africa which is comprised of only founders from different parts of africa so that we can focus on help, helping to eradicate poverty in africa in kenya we have that organization we are working together with the general organization of missionaries for africa and also i sp- had spoken to chris johnson I've started one with a group of founders uh one which is going to work with on passive angels and then we have also started oh bless another group from a different part of Kenya so we have three groups in Kenya simultaneously trying to come together so that if we work together all of us as founders from there we can do a lot so i believe we have an opportunity to do that key wendel do you have a plan for conquering poverty Thanks Ash. Yeah, I think the uh it's a multifaceted problem that stems it's an individual uh problem. I think it has to be defined as why is somebody why why are they in a state of poverty? Is it lack of education, is it lack of a job skill set or is it from what I see most uh, in my profession is addiction? and i think if you bring somebody in there's a program in my hometown they they bring individuals in that want the help first of all an individual has to want to not be addicted anymore and identify you know, the cause first that's what you're saying right yes sir okay. identify the cause and if it's addiction help them get off of that illicit drug street drug and then build them up as an individual give them the skill set to have a job uh and there you go does it have to be a job or a way a source of uh, earning a source of earning yes sir same yeah, that's better okay yeah. all right leon or chris johnson if uh, uh who uh, amanda it looks like she has something to say i do have something to say i'm in the kitchen cooking and i'm talking to myself and my dad goes who are you talking to And I said, well, I'm partaking in the conversation just with myself <laughs> because I wanted to. I feel very strong about this topic. Um, I'm a social worker and a lot of what I do is providing resources to people. And oftentimes there's not resources really that you can offer people. So 
Mr. Ash, with everything you're having to say and what you want to do, I think a good place to start is just getting every resource that you can find on every little topic you can possibly think of. Homelessness, so you find shelter. Um, drug addiction, find a program for someone to go in so they can get clean. Um, you know, food scarcity, is there a program in a country that can offer, you know, food, um, like food stamps or um, food um, closets? Uh, get every resource you can pro possibly think of. And if you're thinking more so on a team base, fill your team up with social workers, because that's pretty much the main job that they do is to provide people with resources to help them get a, a better life, whether it's, you know, po getting out of poverty, finding food, taking care of their families. Um, I think that would be a really good start is just to find as much resources as you can and, you know, build your support team up with people that can also help with those resources. Everything I have a question for Amanda, though. Go ahead. Okay, based on what you just said. Mm -hmm. So, so if we get, say, food stamps, we start to give them food, find an agency, right? Mm -hmm. Find somewhere where it's going to give them shelter and all of what you just said, does that eliminate it or does it make them more dependent? On no, what, and it, know, definitely, it definitely makes them um, more dependent on you, but there has to be a, a program in place that can, you know, you provide them with these resources and they have to meet these goals in order to keep not being so independent. So, okay, yes, you can have food here, but what are you doing in order for you to stay in the shelter and getting this food? Are you going out and finding a job? Are you providing them a job? I think there could be so much more, but I think that just listening after this conversation, you guys are thinking so broad that go to the most basic things first, find the resources, and then figure out all the nitty gritty, find details to make them where their people aren't as dependent on those resources give them we're, we're not going to judge and conclude right uh, at the moment charles so we're going to listen to all the that remember amanda she's representing the traditional solutions that uh, upon the educational system and the science of social studies and all of that so we we can take something but obviously we're in on passive we're going to do something radical disruptive but we shouldn't ignore any idea. We should listen to all the ideas. And if we take, just like Amanda said, different resources, different uh, uh, identify uh, the causes and, uh, you know, it, it's a combination as uh, Kendall said, uh, Key uh, said that it's, we have to know um, the, the case of each cause of poverty. And upon that, we deal with it. Body said, we have to scale it, start small. You know, uh, we have to, like Gladys said, more. We have to equip people and give them a way to earn on their own rather than, you know, be independent. So it's, I think we're all on the same page, but we want to take all the ideas, then we uh, refine them in a way. And uh, Marty said something, we, we have the knowledge, we, we, we can solve it. It just, we have to put all those ideas on the table. Uh, why don't we listen to, uh, do you want to say something, Chris, before we go to Cynthia or uh, Janet? No, but this is the start, guys, of organizing Obless. Thank you so much, Ash, for doing this because people are, are really texting me. I'm trying to get them on the panel. I don't know how much time we got, but guys, any ideas that you have? Until I hear my wife is saying, you are divorced. Uh, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm supposed to be uh, 30 minutes ago to be somewhere that is 20 minutes away. So I'm good. Who cares? Okay. Go ahead. Ash. I can. Gonna... I cannot let humanity down. I can let my wife down. That's what I've been doing all my life. I always let her down. Hey guys, nothing great new. Subject. Great subject to post on O Network. What you feel? How you want to do things? That's some great things we could probably solution. We need solution. Enough talk. We want a solution. Go ahead. Hit it. Cynthia. Hello, Ash and everyone. Hello, hello. Um, I agree with, 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 with what Amanda said, but I think that like the system should be better. And it, because we are such a powerful company, I think that it should start with like uh, uh, 
our city councils and the mayors and you know you're in charge have... of philadelphia okay you're yes. you're the mayor today you take all the decisions yes. you have all the support all the supply all the everything okay right. you command it how do you solve it so you're gonna have to have a sit down with them and like figure out what what is it that each city need how the poor do... the poor ask them for a solution okay got it yes right okay uh, Leon, you want to say something? You have worked, I think, also with the uh, city. Yes, I worked with this, a lot of the cities. And uh, yes, yeah, so a lot what Cynthia was saying, but also I, I always thought about the sustainable housing because that also get people doing things within the little sustainable area because because everybody is not going to be integrated to go back out into the work field right away, but you get them starting small, doing something, becoming part of something and, uh, and having a little place where they can meet. And, and sometimes you start with the people who are want to be, don't want to be on the street because some people have been out there so long and that is, they don't trust government. They, everything is suspicious to them. So you got to start with the group people who want to be, mm help first and once you start with those people who want to be helped then you can't you don't want to put a stigmatism a, a homeless shelter but you want to put it in like a like a sustainable village so people can come and start being uh, participating and then you get all the people involved i believe you can get all the people involved and as cynthia was saying there's a lot of government money out there also they, they don't know what to do with it because they don't even if the government could fix something they would have fixed it they has got the money sitting and they don't know what to do with it. But if, the, if we come up with a blueprint, a blueprint starting a, like a smaller, a smaller basis, we can actually show the government we got a blueprint and we can also tap into their, their, their money as well. And then we can start um, having that, the people who wants to be helped first. And we have so many people I heard last time that have so many background and so many uh, experiences doing homeless shelters and things and working with homeless people. And then we can start assigning those people to the teams and getting the, the resources that we need for all the people and starting on that small level first and build that blueprint. And then I think that blueprint could be put in every city, but take the, then start thinking about taking the stigmatism off of homeless shelter. Because if you do that, people already know that homeless shelter is the same everywhere you go. You go in and yeah, yeah. that kind of thing. Thank you, Leon. Okay, so uh, just to, just to be clear, yeah. I am not typically like that. I would like to say hi, how you doing, Leon? Good to hey, see hey, you. Bro. All of that. Okay, smile, kiss, blow, hug, all of that. But I really, I'm I'm behind. But I want to get a, a, as much as information as I can grab and, and you know and process. Yeah. But then we will be at a different pace next time. So uh, try to have to be ready, Janet. If you want to run, Tony. Yeah. Uh, yes, um, so my idea is uh, very similar to what Leon's saying, but the aspects that I'd like to add to what he said is that I envision creating communities. These communities are almost like little cities. So you have houses, you, so you provide, you provide housing, you provide education. The idea essentially is around reducing expenses. One of the biggest reasons why people are in poverty is because of their bills. So if you can eliminate those bills, and then what you do is uh, within that community, everybody does their share. So you almost go back to the olden days where there's a barter system. So everybody has their responsibility, has their jobs, even the children. So the children are, get, are being provided free schools, which then provides free. Um, parents aren't having to worry about babysitting or paying for that education. They know where their kids are because the kids live within the community. They can walk there. And then on top of that, while the kids are at school, what the kids are doing is they're cooking the meals for that night. So when the parents get off of work, so you have the social workers that are providing the jobs, finding the avenues of where people are going to go, what they're going to do in the day. The kids are being taken care of. The kids are learning to farm. So that every family also has their community garden where they're cooking, they're getting the food. Once the kids have finished their education, um, they are then taught to go and cook. They're learning to cook. They're learning to sew. They're learning, you know, so they're making clothing. Um, the children are learning to clean because within that community, they're going around and they're collecting the garbage from the different areas. I mean, it's, it's, it's literally an entire city where 
kids are being reared up. And wow. what it also fosters is a community mindset. So children are growing up from day one till the time they come out of school, that they're learning that they're helping one another. Everybody helps each other to get along and live. So it's a true community mindset. And that is something that, yeah, that's my idea in a nutshell. Give me a list. Thank you, Janet. Great. Okay, Tony Monk, go ahead. Hi, Ash. Thank you so much for Hi. giving me this opportunity. I appreciate Indeed. it. It's a, it's a very important subject. Uh, in most, I, I don't know, in the United States and Canada, uh, we already have the resources in place. We have nonprofit societies uh, that have, um, you know, computers, uh, clothing, foods, the education that people need to get off the streets. The problem with these nonprofit agencies is that they don't have the, uh, the, re the financial resources to, to get more people off the streets. Uh, government doesn't give them enough, uh, enough uh, financial resources to help them out. So as part of the company, uh, whether it's the Angels or Old Bless, if we could approach some of these nonprofit agencies and ask them what kind of resources they need, what kind of financial uh, 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 seed capital they need to get more people off the street, they'll probably give you a better idea because these people are very intelligent. So they're uh, counselors, psychiatrists, psychologists, uh, doctors, all kinds of different people. So if we approach them in these nonprofit societies, I think they'll give us a better understanding of how we can get, uh, we, we're never going to eradicate the whole thing, but we will eradicate a big, huge portion of it for sure. Thank you, Tony. Indeed. Uh, absolutely. And let me just, let me just throw in there at just to remind everyone as they're making their comments uh, that remember poverty is more than just homelessness, right? It's not just about homelessness. You have people who actually have a job, but yet they're still in poverty, even though they have a job. Um, you know, so let's just keep that in mind as we're making our comments. Yeah, like I said, uh, employment, unemployment, um, uh, homelessness is one side of it, uh, uh, starvation, uh, health care, uh, so many housing is a, is a big deal. So you could have a house, not literally homeless, but still below the poverty level. Yeah, okay. these nonprofit societies, Ash, these not, that I was talking about, they're diverse in so many different uh, 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 situations. It's, some it's of not them one are thing. for addiction, some of them are for homeless people on, on the street for whatever, some of them are abuse. There's different kinds. So if we can just approach them and just ask them what they actually need, then they can give us a better understanding. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Agreed. All right. Uh, you want to hit it, uh, Kathy? How do you solve uh, poverty in West Palm Beach? Kathy, unmute yourself, Kathy. Kathy, you are muted. Kathy, we can't hear you. Uh, Oh, okay. you want to go? Okay, I, got it, I got it. I got it. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. I'm not on a different um, machine. Uh, you know, I've been in Palm Beach County for over 30 years, and um, we have tremendous resources, uh, but they have no money because the budget, and Tony hit it up the nail on the head, that the, the government has cut so much funding. But, like, I'm thinking about Career Source. It's an organization that's in every community in Florida, and they have apprenticeship programs, they have job training, they have interviewing skills, they teach how to interview, how to, you know, how to, how to write resumes, whatever. And, but it's their people are turned away because they don't have enough um, staff to handle the people that want to come there. So it's really the money that is, and that is the problem, uh, in, at least in, in where I, where I live. And, and um, also the mindset, you know, there are people that are on welfare, Ash, that don't want to work. Yeah, yeah. And, laziness, yeah. Yeah, and That's they'd rather just have disease. another baby and get more money. And so, so change, change mindset. And um, that is something that I, is a big, in, in my heart and, and one of my parts of, of a book. Do you believe we would have a good chance, Kathy, uh, that we will contribute to the solution somehow? I think so. I really do because okay. because I'll tell you why. Especially in like 
Palm Beach County where there are so many, so much wealth and there is so much charity, um, people want to help. So if there's more funding in these agencies, they will, they will come in and they will help too, if that makes sense. Um, uh, yes, I believe so. I really do. I think people don't want to be on the street. I don't think that pregnant, I'm seeing pregnant women on the street and it kills wow. me. Yeah. All right, let's hear from uh, Helen. Do you want to say something? Mm -hmm. One word? Okay. Thank you, Ash. I'm, I'm so happy to talk to you today. Uh, um, yeah, I yeah, appreciate everything you have been doing for us. Yeah. So uh, I've worked with uh, Save the Children and we were working, taking care, trying to uh, eradicate poverty, which we, we didn't go anywhere. But we're using the what is called the participatory approach that you you go to the people, like in Africa, you, you talk to the people and uh, in the community and ask what they really want, what is their need. And usually they, they were very happy and they'll give us what they really need in that village. And that's how we came to assist them. Some will need water. And, and they create wells for them and taps where the community will be uh, getting clean water and clean water will keep you healthy. Um, there's a second thing that I, I wanted to talk about is uh, farming because there's shortage of food because the people cannot till uh, large farm areas. So if we can get machinery, for for farming that would be of great value and when you have enough food uh sometimes food those who could cultivate the food gets rotten because they can't get the food from the farms to the market or to the the homes they don't get enough most of the food gets rotten in the farm so so we need to create farm to market roads that they will carry the food and sell for 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 money that, that yes, and then you have uh, education. You open schools that will train people to be more educated, and they'll be more useful in the society. Yes, the, the, that's access to education. That's what we need. Thank you. A pleasure, absolutely. Okay, Bill Moss, do you want to say something now? Okay, come on. Mm -hmm. Hey, okay. Ash. Yeah, Della. You don't want me to say we yeah. employ food workers and build a distribution center everywhere. Example of bless Amazon. That's what Bill wanted to say. Okay. Okay. Beautiful. Amazing. I have. I'm in the same direction. Okay. Uh, so here is uh, just just even if we talk and make it a ritual, like even once a week to start with. We want to start talking about that. We will get so many ideas and thoughts. Somehow we will uh, mesh them and blend them and come up with uh, what's possible and what's tangible. But uh, make no mistake, there's some leader, founder will be sitting here and listening. And one day they're going to have a breakthrough. They're going to say, you know what? Ash, enough is enough. I'm done. Let's go. Let's do it, okay, whatever it takes. So it takes a couple of people to take radical decisions and just have a mindset where we will find, uh, we will go to, to, you know, to hell and come back. It's not no problem until we solve it uh, without uh, giving up, without uh, easing up. Uh, so I do believe that we will come up with something. I, I don't think we're at a stage where we say exactly what it is. I have some ideas. I know it has to be a collection of multiple things. I do believe we have to start with something, make sure it works, then we replicate it. Uh, but more importantly, we, uh, what Kathy said, we don't believe in the system in any way. So we don't even have the mindset that we, we trusted or uh, some of you said that. Uh, I don't think we, we're gonna rely much on what's been done and not working so far. Uh, so it has to be a different concept. It has to be something fresh and new. 
what I envision, what I envision is one place. Why don't we build a place? Okay, so it's not going to be Burj Khalifa. It can be a small facility starting in Dearborn or Michigan, or Detroit, and something abandoned. We go, refurbish it or fix it, uh, and, and uh, you know, we put food there. Uh, the workers can be the food maker. They can have, uh, you know, uh, decent wages, just barely to survive. But what we want to do is also have the education combined in one place. That's why a while ago said, let's come up with the engineers. I want somebody to sketch an architecture, okay, a facility where people come from one side, they depart from the other side. We we don't know the time, but the, the, the faster, the better. Basically put 100 people from this direction, they leave that way, they're equipped, they're ready. They used to be uh, a week ago or a month ago, they used to be poor, now they have an income, they have, uh, uh, you know, the resources or the somewhere to put their foot. Uh, and, uh, you know, that place has to include uh, equipping them, whether it's some small duty, light duty, it can be phone work, it could be for those who can learn the computer and uh, be able to operate and customer support, uh, sign up people, register accounts, then uh, we can have uh, those who are good at, you know, physical work, chores, making food, selling, all of that. So we can have different departments, okay? So it's literally a place where we sell food, where we offer education, like a workshop, get day one. By the time you leave, you understand this business on passive. You're able to attract two, three other customers where now your business is covered. So how we can cover them. So you see, we already have the foundation of that. We don't need to go too far. But if we organize it to make sure we cover the education aspect, uh, those who need to be, uh, uh, you know, to take some attention, you know, uh, the addiction, all of that, but, but they have to be separated. Some people in the street, they have PhD and, uh, you know, they got the brain, they got the knowledge, they got the, the, they're not in any addiction. It's just life got tough. Uh, so how can we uh, kind of create different channels and different uh, ways of uh, equipping people? They come to the door, they literally leave with a career, with something that they can rely on uh, and think in uh, positively. So how can we compress that? How can we physically plan it? All right, it's like, a it's, uh, it's like a pr uh, uh, production line, all right? You get from one point, leave from the other side, completely revamped, a new person equipped, ready to go and conquer the world. Now they will replicate that, two, three people and so on. Remember, we have 8 billion people, I don't know how many of them, probably a billion or two have a problem. Let them be the person on passive. Have you heard, Ash, uh, of the Venus project in, uh, in uh, Florida? Jack Fresco? Yes. Yeah. Fresco. Uh -huh. it's, a, it's, a, it's a good example to, uh, to uh, eradicate poverty. Mm. You're stealing my story, Ash. Yeah. Well, well, we're probably thinking along the line, but uh, we're we're just brainstorming now. Okay. And uh, um, I took three pages so far. Ash, can I say mine? I yeah. got exactly the same idea. I thought I already said yours. Okay. What happens is you buy multiple buildings. Yeah. Do ex now, all these homeless people are not idiots. They all have no. something in them that they can do. 
vets can have their own security program. Mm. Others can have lawn care programs. Ladies can build uh, dresses or uh, stockings or gloves or anything. You put these people into this building and you let them become self-sufficient and give them back their pride. And they will be paying the bills and everything. Yeah. At first, we supply the food in that at first. Then they become self-sufficient. We give them yes. an unpassive uh, uh, position as exactly. a reseller. Account. Yeah. And those that are addicted go in a different building yeah. where we have recovering uh, addicts like myself, who's going to be 38 years, <laughs> using the program to bring them out of it if they want it. So I figure we can help at least my point is 92%. Now, this is in countries like Canada and the U.S. When it comes to other countries, we need to build hospitals, schools, wells, uh, show them how to grow food, etc., etc., etc. That's my plan. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. So I don't know what's the deal here. I see like more than 100 hands here. Uh, is it... Is it... Uh, okay. Why don't we just uh, put that, all the hands down and ask, let's say three more, who can come, just give us a solution. You have to give us a solution, okay? You have to give us a solution. Everybody, raise your hand if you have the solution. Think if we do what you propose now, if we implement it, if we execute it, there will be no more poverty. Again, we're not talking about homelessness. We're talking about poverty and all... You know, poverty is a lack of resources, like lack of finance, finances. It could be home, it could be food, it could be clothing, it could be education. Lack of something. That's what poverty is. Shortage. Okay, so. I have Thierry Ocho and Delia here. Thierry Ocho, have you had a chance to speak yet? If you could, please go right ahead. Yeah, yeah, I think um, I, I already said to Ash, uh, yes. the Venus Project, uh, the Venus Project, uh, we, which we, we are in Florida, I don't know uh, at which step they are in, but uh, radically, it's uh, having no more money. <laughs> so uh, if you don't have, uh, if, you, if you don't need any more money, you, you can er eradicate poverty. But uh, it's not that simple. <laughs> yeah, of course, it's not. And okay. in France, in France, with uh, 67 million uh, uh, people, uh, we have a uh, we have a concept. We have a, uh, we have something uh, that was put uh, 30 years ago. Les restos du coeur. Uh, literally, it's uh, the restaurant of arts, and uh, it is something that is helping nearly one million people a year. Uh, with food, um, they, they are trying to do something with the shelter now, but it's quite complicated because they need a lot of money and the uh, governing body, European uh, governing uh, body is, is not helping them But remember, them we're anymore. on passive. We're uh, not looking for easy jobs, right? We're not lo looking yeah, for yeah, simple yeah, jobs. Yeah, yes. yeah, I know. So it doesn't but, matter how yeah, difficult, as long yeah, as it's, it's possible or or it, it will solve the problem. We're not worried about the work. Yeah, but the, 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 the thing is that uh, if they have one million poor people in France, uh, it is nearly 10 or 11 or 12 million people who are poor in France, who are uh, under the level of poverty. So, I mean, there is a lot of work to do. It's not only the rest sure. of the care that, that is able to do that. Yeah, there's a lot of work. Yeah, it's... Yeah, but it's possible. I want to I wanna agree with you on one thing. It's possible and, uh, and uh, we'll do whatever it takes. Okay. Um, Della, you want to say something? Hi, definitely. Ask What's hi, the solution? How are you? Good. How um, can you push a button and there will be no more poverty? Oh, that is a very nice question. A very good question. Uh, for me, we need to... 
eliminate the system that most of all most of us are using the limited negative old belief we have to eliminate that as i have heard you said that we have to have a new system it's not just um outside it's not just the system the money or whatever because i believe um passive is already have the resources that's why i have 11 accounts i intend to have the three accounts to eliminate poverty in my own place in bohol because for those who doesn't know me i've been really serving the poorest of the poor for 13 years now and even if i don't have a job here in america i still really serving them not just in m- money but emotionally and mentally so to eliminate poverty we have to start it on the ground changing the negative collective limited belief and uh, before i i came here before unpassive came into my life i already have a plan and idea and you just deliver it to me this unpassive i'm very happy watching you doing what i imagine because i'm going to use these resources the resources is not a problem it is the attitude of the selfish negative people around the world and i know you are the only one who can really save poverty by teaching education is important yes but it's we will not use the system of education that we have right now we need to educate people especially the children the, the pregnant people because the the world is depending on the children we cannot teach adult they are always judging so education children, is a big deal is is what uh, you're yes. proposing yeah i agree absolutely, with you absolutely all right and the mindset education which is Let's education see. Neeraj is from india is do, you know okay. do you yes. know neeraj okay do you know neeraj okay we mm-hmm. are i'm expecting to be uh, i'm going to take notes he has a solution neeraj what do you think okay uh, for me the poor uh, i have identified three reasons for poverty first one is a uh, uh, like people losing job uh, due to covid or maybe other seasonal activities so you have to encourage on uh, uh, alternate employment which which is uh, which is the whole calendar which which covers the whole calendar year instead of a seasonal activity like agriculture in which you are dependent on uh, the rain and other natural factors uh second one is about health uh poverty can also happen because of health conditions uh for that you require clean water good sanitation facilities and uh, pro- provision of basic medical facilities even to the rural to rural of areas uh so that is one of them next is about education Uh, generally uh, for that i think uh, elimination of gen- gender inequality what happens is majority of the women uh, do not go to schools uh, all maybe it's the male population that go into schools and what happens is uh, uh, they get married uh, at a very uh, early age they have uh, kids too early and they are not able to maybe uh, uh, feed the entire family and that's where the poverty occurs according to me so uh, if if we are able to come uh, at the basic level and give education uh, at the school level itself the awareness level i think we would be able to prevent poverty thank you very much thank you neeraj okay all right abdi Hi, Ash. Uh, I have a little bit of uh, a story about a gentleman uh, who actually won a Nobel Peace Prize uh, from Bangladesh. His name is Mohammed Yunus. He had a really a very good successful operation back in a couple of years back uh, in Bangladesh, uh, where he empowered people in uh, like putting uh, whatever the skills that the people have, uh, just to give them a small loan and then facilitate them for them to go to action so they can actually fulfill their need and if they don't have the skills then you still give them the 
the capacity to educate them or give them whatever their good traits or whatever they are. So in a couple of months or years, they will be able to go into the workforce. That's one side I think might be a, to be looking. He might have read some books about this uh, idea. Uh, he's a very well known. He also won a Nobel Peace Prize. Mohammed Yunus, Professor Mohammed Yunus. Uh, yeah, might be right, yeah, yeah. He's from Bangladesh. Yes, yes, yeah. Thank you. Okay, uh, Joyce Hicks, you want to say something? Hello, Ash and everyone. Um, I agree Anybody with... notice that she looks different, better, <laughs> younger? Oh my. This will happen oh. to you, Chris, Julie. Take a look. This is how you will look two months later. Okay. Two months after seeing gonna... Ash and everything just improved. It's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> is, is it true? What happened? It is so true. It's like after seeing you. You look amazing. You. Everything just went to the top, like, you know. <laughs> wow. Joyce, yeah. as always, you looked amazing. And Chris, don't let uh, uh, Ash give you false hope, buddy. Please. <laughs> it will but happen, Chris. I until promise. Until we met, <laughs> things have changed. It's, yes. Come on, Mark. Always improving. <laughs> Julie, always improving. <laughs> All right. Yes. Uh, give I me agree. the solution. All right. What's the solution? With, I agree with you, Ash. You know, as you said, build, build the... Um, place where it's all in one everyone can come in there talk to the person because everyone's different they have different needs different mm -hmm. levels um talk to that person see what they need once you find out the need and the skill as so somebody has said you build up on that and you build that person and then um you look at also eliminating i mean the welfare system it hasn't worked forever so eliminating all the governments people a lot of people don't trust the government so kind of eliminating that and also looking at mental health Everyone is different. If we can improve a person's mental health, I'm a social worker as well, and I'm a therapist. If you can improve a person's mental health and improve um, their stress, eliminate stress and depression, you can't eliminate, but decrease it, eliminate the stress and depression, um, help to improve the mental health. And you can begin to work on that and begin to teach and coach people and model people as well, model for people. You want to go like one-on-one -on -one or... You can do it in group. I do. We do groups. We do one on one. It's just that person. You can do big groups, especially with um, groups with everything that's coming with O Connect and everything that's coming out. We'll have the, the we have the resources to mm. do that. We can have huge groups setting, and we'll, we'll be teaching, and we'll be modeling, we'll be coaching people how to um, improve their lives. So we can. We there's so it's so huge. There's so much that can be done with the tools that we already have, and we and with everyone that's in within on passive, as we come together and put our ideas together, we begin to build upon each other. We begin to teach, we begin to um, model, we begin to put those things out there. We put it in the atmosphere and we begin to teach those people. You, you teach them to fish and they will become self-sufficient. Um, mm -hmm. So I think, you know, offering them the on passive position as well as they become, like everyone is different. There's so many levels of poverty, so many areas that has to be touched that if we could just begin, even if each founder begins yeah. to touch on an area and touch one person at a time, it's just one person at a time. If we can change the life of one person at a time, we can change so many. I mean, I you so I'll, I'll keep talking, but there's so much to be done with all the tools that we have in on passive. We can teach thousands and thousands and you know of, in one group in one setting, and with all the tools that we'll have coming up we'll be able to just do it for masses. And there's missionaries that out there that are doing some of the work that we have missionaries at our church. They go out and they do so much that we can't do. They go into the communities. Um, I, one of the missionaries, they worked, they went to um, a country and they, where all the kids were collecting garbage, but they went out there and they began to model and teach them and talk to them and got into the communities and begin to show them how to build, how to take those resources. They began to help those children and build those relationships with them. And then they begin to teach them. They built churches, they built schools, they gave them clothing, shoes. And now those communities are being self-sufficient where they can run themselves. Or the children are learning, the parents are learning, and, and they have people there that care about them. And when people know that you care, that's what that's the main thing. Because you can give them all the money in the world. But if you if they don't know that you care about them, you're gonna you're gonna miss so many people. So I can continue talking, but I'm not giving someone Thank else a you. chance. Thank you. Do you consider yourself a social worker? Because I um, want Amanda I, to, to see if she can relate to that. Is, yes. is she listening, Chris? 
Yes, I am a social worker. I'm a therapist. I do counseling. I do. Um, I used to do a lot of the community work within the community, but I don't do that anymore. I do like the mental health and the the um, coaching and as far as you know, uh, counseling therapy. Um, no, everything then, she's saying is awesome. I agree. 100%. She's in Michigan too. I yeah. Mean, yeah, I went right with you and Chris and Peter. <laughs> Yeah. No, everything you're saying is a hundred percent true. And you know, that's where I was kind of going with, but I just got stopped. So you were on um, point. Yes. No. Yeah. yeah. If you have those resources in place, I was just telling my dad, you know, if you have a website where you can go and it hyperlinks you to a resource that could help someone, it's a good start and it, it enables you to help someone, but you know, it, it's a start and it's an idea to kind of uh, somewhere to start and grow from yeah I was trying to get and you know and yeah all the things of people do be dependent on you know your resources and that's unfortunately how some people are but like you're saying you can teach them different ways to adapt and to learn and hopefully they can be independent on their own right so exactly. I agree a hundred percent Yes, I agree. I have a private practice here in Jackson and I do counseling, like I said, but there's so much, there's, as uh, as you said, like buildings out there, if everything is a one stop, it's amazing. We could be within that building. We could have that um, O Connect there. We're teaching right from that building or wherever that place is. And as Marty said too, as you do it, then you, and you guys said it too, you scale it up, you learn it, what works here, you, you take it to the next community or to the next country or wherever state or whatever it is and just continue. Fantastic. Like mm-hmm. Melvin, yeah. your husband, how's he doing? He's doing well. He's well. You still with him? I, I'm, I'm still hanging with him. <laughs> Even though Marty, Mar- he's, he's still Marty. I tried to tell him Ash, but he's still Marty's biggest fan. <laughs> I, 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 I can't beat that. that. <laughs> I can, he went, he went all the way to the top. He went all so, the way to the top. I write. <laughs> Well, say hello to him. It was really a pleasure uh, I will. Thank connecting you so with much. both of you. Thank you. All everyone. right. Uh, I see that uh, Wasim is uh, awake in uh, Pakistan. Salam alaikum, brother. Uh, Wa alaikum salam. Uh, sir, Tell uh, us how you? can we solve the issue in Pakistan? Yes. I just finished my sari and uh, uh, I was watching you as well. And uh, uh, like that, uh, like other people, I have many uh, plan like education, health, homeless people, and special child people, uh, childrens, and many many things. But uh, uh, being a Muslim, uh, uh, you know, uh, we have to pay uh, every 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 uh, every people who who afford uh, annually zakat, two point five percent of uh, specific specific amount who has gold and silver. And uh, if uh, everyone uh, implement this, every deserve, every affordable uh, person uh, implement these things in uh, our life, no uh, pro- no re- poverty will remove in everywhere. And uh, before this, uh, I I saw uh, in other business before on passive, uh, the concept was different. The concept was different, and um, rich become more rich and uh, poor uh, become more poor, and uh, the on passive is the first company. He uh, that he talks uh, talks about uh, mutual benefit and uh, about uh, other uh, people. And um, if we if we uh, set a, a certain amount of our earning uh, in our every founder, and uh, we will we will uh, spend this amount to others, no I matter. Understand. Where we will spend this amount, but uh, I think uh, poverty will remove. But uh, but we I want to wish you and your family a happy Ramadan, Ramadan Mubarak. Yes. We'll talk to you next Ramadan time. Mubarak. I want to hear from a very wise lady, Willow. Can you tell us what you think? Thank you. Oh, Ash, I'm not going to turn my video on. I bet out. That's okay. I, I want to focus on the message. And you don't want to see me in this car. But <clears throat> I want to tell you. There's so many faces of poverty. It's not just one face we're looking at. We all have our desires to uplift humanity. However, I think that Joyce Hicks, Amanda, and my friend, I I have three people on my team 
that are absolutely in the streets all the time working and helping lift humanity up like you are, Mr. Mafara. However, I think that we're, we'll, we have a tendency here, we could become so scattered that we wouldn't really get a whole lot done if we don't start focusing on the needs of our own community. To be community driven, not world driven necessarily. Like I wanna help Native American reservations and that's my big dream. My father grew up in horrible conditions on the reservations. And so I have three reservations that I wanna devote like Adela was talking about some of my uh, extra founder positions. So the money goes directly to them. You know, I, I want to do that. But I also think, like Joyce says, there's this whole, whole group of areas that we have to focus on. One is mental health. You know, you got to divide, I think, the, the programs into divisions because there's seniors that are out there that have lost their homes because of medical bills and things like that. My husband and I just hang on by the skin of our teeth. Both of us have had heart problems. I had a heart attack last month. And so we, we are paying through the teeth for medical care. And I barely made it out of the hospital without having to hawk my drawers, you know, <laughs> needless to say. It is terrible out there. And so what I would, I would say... I mean, you sound great, actually. Makes well, me... Thank you. I, I want feel to like say, I want to have a couple of heart attacks. Like, wow, you look amazing. <laughs> no, no, darling, don't do that. Uh, what, one of the things I, I really feel strongly about, and I've told you this before, and I'm not trying to just give you kudos, Mr. Mafara. No one has reached out to the average everyday person like you are doing. There are people that are working three jobs and are still below the poverty level. And so I, I think if I was going to push education, I would push education in the trades. Plumbers make more money than <laughs> you could believe in the world right now. And we've quit putting our people like in high school, they used to have, they teach kids how to build, how to, you know, help themselves. They've taken all of that out of public education. But we could put something back into the educated field, like teaching them a trade that they can work in the city, plumbing, uh, drywall, uh, and all of those trades pay very, very good wages because they're all under their unionized jobs. And so we could do something like Mr. Ash suggested. You know, we could have the building, hey, listen, we could get you a job hanging drywall for six weeks, but you've got to take that money and you've got to put it back into your fund to provide for your housing. You know, any any programs like that will work, but we got to do it by community. Each community is a specific organism all on its own, you know. Philadelphia you thought is different. Or consider that you, if, if you're where you want to be financially, would you employ others to Absolutely. help assist you? Okay. I've so I want every founder to neighbors, think of, you know? of just thinking, what if you employ one person? You don't have to be in the business, but if you just employ one person. Yeah. That's the way I, I figure. My husband and I were going to take our neighbor who has worked all his life in the buildings trade. He's an absolute genius at gardening, and we want to grow food for people, you know. And Are you so, enjoying listening to other ideas, like you oh said, Della God, and I'm all so that? Excited. Okay, so why to... don't we listen to more? We Please. can't have enough, like Lystra. Okay, let's listen to Lystra. What do you want to say? Hi, Ash. Hello. Yeah, I was wondering if we can think about a facility to help some of these people that's on the streets, or even if they are in a shelter. I have been there with food and clothes and so on, and I find 
I don't know if it's because they've been out in the streets, but they are disturbed. Okay, so a, fa a facility to help bring them on track again, like with shrinks, um, doctors, nurses, and so on. That will help these people find out where their head's at because a lot of them are disturbed. And I think that's the main reason they're there on the streets. You know, some of them, not all of them. So a place where they can come and get uh, medical help and meds and so on if they need it. That has been on my mind. And I think that would be a great idea. I agree. All right, we have one more last uh, speaker. Who would that be? A lady would be nice. We have Marcian. Marcian, you want to say something? She was here. Marcian Hamabu. While she's gone, anyone else you want to take uh, yeah. the last? While, while you're doing that, Ash, I mean, what you she's just back. said. She's Okay. Oh, okay, yeah. go ahead. Uh, maybe, maybe you can say what you want to say and she get ready. Michael, go. Yeah, I was just saying that, like what you just mentioned um, about founders employing someone, you know, and, you know, to me, you know, that is the solution. I was just having a conversation uh, with the founder back and forth. And what I was saying is that, you know, we can't rely on governments and all of institutions and all of that. I, I believe that it has to be done privately and that every single founder is a private company, right? Every single founder is a private company. And so as such, right, you can employ others, right? For example, you know, I always tell my wife about stimulating the economy, right? That, yeah, we pay to get someone to come and shovel our, our driveway. Not because I can't go shovel the driveway, right? But it stimulates the economy. Opportunity. Right? We pay yeah. someone to, to, to come cut the grass. Yeah, not because we can't go cut the grass, but again, stimulates the economy. So there's things that we can do as individuals under a company umbrella uh, whereby we can employ others. Um, it's not a difficult thing to do. And then we will do a good job as being the employer uh, in the sense that we're going to pay them more than they deserve. We're going to pay them more than the fair share or whatever the going rate is to make sure that they don't need to have three, four, five, six jobs, right? It's just not necessary. And then now they can actually be a family again because the funds right, are there and it's sustainable because on passive is sustainable. There's a lot we can do. Um, of course. Ash. So now you understand why I say to our employees, you cannot have a founder position, you cannot register with Unpassive. Now you understand why those work with me, all areas, you've seen some of them. I don't tell them about the business, I don't invite them because I want them to continue what they're doing. We don't want everybody to be in our business. All right, last uh, message from, uh, our sister, Marcian, you want to say something? Go ahead. How do you think we can minimize or conquer the uh, poverty issue globally? Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ash, for giving me this platform. Thank you to all the Leadership Council and to all our funders. And um, from where I came from, Cameroon, basically, uh, the level of poverty is not going to be solving the same way like in the United States where I live. Uh, people have different issues. And uh, our level of poverty back home, education first, because if we believe that, if we train children from little age up, giving them good education, and with the parent most of the time they don't have home. We have what we can have transition homes. Transition home for them, roots, because where they have development, where they have root, they have development. We don't have root, we don't have water, we don't have food. So if we have to change the way that people have to live, we have to start by giving them at least good drinking water. We are having cholera going on now in my country. People are dying from cholera right now. I'm talking to you, Mr. Ash. 150 people a day, they are dying from cholera at this 21st century. So if the neighbor has one bottle of water, 
it's not enough. So I think that for us, where I came from, to eradicate this poverty, we have to start by changing people's life by giving us drinking water, large, good school, and we after if we have all those things and transition homes, we ourselves are going to help a lot. I'm in yeah. a project, bright light project. We are doing some of those things, but we don't have enough resources. We are putting girls to, to training to do some work. So if we can go from there, it's going to be good for us in Cameroon. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you so much. So, yeah, so I start thinking how can we have one, like almost like a production line, you know, we get in from one yeah. place, it's a strategic process where we get in, academy, uh, give them the education they need, at least to manage their own passive business, uh, get their uh, basics covered, whether it's a uh, a business account, how to function, uh, you know, it could be a device we give them, uh, create that uh, obelisk tank where we can fund this process just to get them off the ground, fund, uh, uh, of the ground, have the business, have the tools, and then obviously replicate that. So they will be completely independent where they have their own income and then keep on that uh, cycle. So I think, uh, you know, we sound like we're, you know, from the same uh, background that somehow we agree on, on all, almost uh, all the thoughts. So uh, we just need to uh, get more sessions and get more technical. Like we want exactly to design one model we're ready to go tomorrow. We will execute that, we'll make it happen, and then study, observe what happens, and then from there we take it. We uh, repeat it or we learn the mistakes and we do it. We are ready to start. Um, uh, Obless is already on. Uh, but again, that's not conquering poverty. That's helping, you know, easing the pain a little bit temporarily. Uh, but if no way we're touching the, the, the whole concept of uh, poverty at this uh, stage. So we want to go to an, uh, another step with OBLES, with Academy, offering the uh, passive uh, uh, products, tools, and, and resources. How can we use all that? And how, how can we align it and streamline it where somebody can come from the door, get some education free or affordably, and then uh, they walk away a completely independent uh, family or individual. So this can go on. I just have a very, very, very good uh, conviction that uh, we will make an impact. I don't know how much of it, but I think uh, if today I can see that we will make an impact, I think in 10 years time from now, we're gonna say anything left, we probably will be checking if there's anything left. So we will do our part and uh, just think of it, just impact one, two. You can employ one, you can help one to get in the business if they have the potential. You saw two, life is good. All right, I will see you next time. I don't know uh, if we're gonna meet before Wednesday uh, on Passive 360, noon Eastern time on Passive 360 just after two days. I cannot sleep. All right. Have a good one.